When I first got into development, I remember being confused about two things. One, I didn't know what the point of Docker was, and two, I thought that Git and GitHub were the same thing. But that's not the topic of today's video. The topic of today's video is things I actually use Docker for. And if that makes it sound like I'm being paid to say that, it is because I am being paid to say that. That's right, Docker is sponsoring this whole video, so there's no skippable section. Unless you skip the whole video, but don't do that. Being honest, I do use Docker quite often. I even had a whole section planned for my last video, but I removed it due to time constraints, so I really wanted to take the sponsorship. I don't want to make this video tutorial though. There are many good Docker tutorials available already, so instead, I want to show some practical ways I use Docker in my day-to-day -day life. I will explain some terms and commands, but I'll keep it as simple as possible. So if I don't explain a command too in detail, that's why. Before starting, there are three things you need to know about Docker. Docker images, Docker files, and Docker containers. A Docker image is a template that contains all the necessary configurations and files to create a container. Docker images can be created via Docker files, which define how your image will be configured. They can also be pulled from a registry if somebody else made them before. Finally, Docker containers are the simulated machines that will run a Docker image. Containers are not VMs, but for simplicity, you can think of them like small computers that will run your Docker images. And that's all you need to know for this video. So without further ado, let's proceed to some Docker use cases. One of the main things I do with Docker, or rather one of the things I avoid doing thanks to Docker, is having to install things in my computer. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's pretend for a second that you're a sad developer who has to code on Windows, and you need to install some database like MongoDB. Now I don't know why, but every single time I've tried installing MongoDB on Windows, I always run into the weirdest issues. I swear, every single time I get a new one, I don't even know how that's possible. Let's also take into consideration that once you're done with MongoDB, you have to uninstall all the individual components one by one, which at least to me, it's very annoying. Thankfully, there are two good solutions. Number one, don't use Windows. Number two, use Docker to install MongoDB. This is actually one of the installation ways MongoDB suggests in its documentation. First, you need to pull the official MongoDB Docker image by running Docker pull. Then if you do Docker run, you will create a container using the image you just pulled. This container will behave just as if a database was installed on a separate machine, except that the machine is just a Docker container, like in the matrix or something. I don't know, I never watched the movie. Finally, once you're done with MongoDB, you can stop or remove the container and there you go, no more bloat. Besides being pretty straightforward, installing a database using Docker allows you to follow the same steps regardless of your operating system. For my last project Mogul, I installed both Redis and MongoDB this way. Be careful though, because if you destroy a container, all the data stored within the container will disappear, which is not very good when you work with databases. But of course, there are ways to store the data outside the containers and mount the directories you need. It's not an obscure thing to do at all, and it's actually very common. Bumwoods, I still have to run two commands to install this, isn't that annoying? Yes, but have you tried installing shit on Windows? Anyways, after running a bunch of commands, you'll need to manage all the images and containers you created. You can do this in two ways. One, you can use the terminal. Two, you can use Docker Desktop. I love CLIs as much as the next Linux guy, but sometimes I do use Docker Desktop. It just simplifies things a bit when you have multiple containers you need to manage and in case you need to examine them more in detail, which I had to do to debug the query engine in my mobile video. It's also integrated with Docker Scout and Docker Hub, so it kinda just streamlines the whole process. And just to prove I'm not making shit up, this is an actual conversation I had with a friend months ago. And just to wrap up this section, some Docker commands that are useful to know are Docker PS to list active containers, Docker PS A to list all containers, keyword being all, docker image ls to list all images you've pulled, docker run to run a docker container, and docker system prune dash dash all dash dash volumes, which you'll need once you start creating containers and get gigabytes and gigabytes of data. Another thing I like doing with Docker is to avoid installing dependencies. This is similar to the previous point, but instead of talking about third-party software products, I'm referring to dependencies in my own projects. This happens a lot when you work on projects that require you to install packages and packages of things you'll never use again. Think for instance a Python project that requires Pandas, Matplotlib, NLTK, BrainFuckFuck, Miniclip, and many other libraries. And while you could use a virtual environment, and that's what some people do, personally I always forget to either create a virtual environment or to activate it, and by the time I realize it's already too late because because I cluttered my global Python environment with useless packages. To avoid this, we can use a Docker file. This is the configuration file that you usually put in the root of your project and it tells the Docker engine how to create a Docker image based on your needs. So for example, I can write a Docker file that looks like this. It starts from a lightweight Python image. Most Docker files will use a base Linux image with some tools already installed so you don't have to waste time installing them yourself. This ensures a fresh installation each time, sort of like setting up the operating system of your VM. Even though, again, a container is not a VM. Then it installs the project-specific dependencies and sets up the necessary things for the image. 
Finally, it specifies some commands to run when the container starts from a Docker image. To build this image, all you have to do is run this command, and then this command to run a container with our newly created Docker image. And just like that, our application is running without having to install any dependencies in our machine. And that's also something cool about Docker. Besides allowing you to avoid installing dependencies, it also allows you to replicate all the things you would normally do, but in a clean environment. Docker Compose is a utility that allows you to define and run multi-container applications. Which means that if you have a big project that requires you to run 10 different projects at the same time, instead of having 10 different terminals opened and installing more dependencies, you can just use Docker Compose to set up everything with one command. Last semester, I had to work on my bachelor's thesis, and one of the things my teammates and I had to do during the research process was to develop a simple web application in Next.js. Which sounds simple enough, however, I had the great idea of using Redis as a database. And while Redis is a great tool and I fucking love Redis, my teammates, reasonably enough, they didn't want to install another tool in their computers. Shout out to my teammates though, I couldn't have finished the thesis without them. This is where Docker Compose came in handy. This thing here is a Docker Compose file, and it is just a YAML file. You can use it in conjunction with your Docker files and Docker images. In this case, I have defined two services, Vidra, the name of our application, and Redis, the database we were using. Vidra is defined locally via a Docker file, while Redis is pulled from a pre-made image from the official registry online. If we run this command here, Docker will build and or pull these images and run all the containers at the same time. In this case, I had only two, but you can define a bigger number if your project needs it. And another cool thing that you can do with Docker Compose is to define the number of replicas you want to have for a specific service. In my search engine video, I mentioned that in order to collect the data of websites, I coded something called a spider, or a web crawler. And while one spider is decently fast, 40 spiders are certainly faster. So by using Docker Compose, I managed to run a shit ton of spiders at the same time. You could also dynamically scale up or down the number of replicas by executing this command. A related use case of Docker Compose is the implementation of load balancers. And while Docker is not a load balancer, you can use Docker Compose to help you set up a load balancer using tools such as Nginx, Caddy, or Traffic, which are just reverse proxy or server programs. I talked a bit about load balancers in my previous video. Granted, I don't have to set up load balancers every day, but I've done it at least twice in my life, which is more than enough. CI-CD, or Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment, is, in simple terms, automating your development process via automatically performing sanity checks on your code and or automatically releasing new versions of your software each time you need it. This is something I covered much more in depth in the original script, but explaining it messed up greatly with the flow of the video, so to summarize it, when you develop software, there is usually a series of steps that you have to execute all the time to run tests, compile, and deploy your final product to the users. You can think of a CI-CD pipeline as a way of automating these steps, and by using Docker, you can facilitate the whole process. For example, in a build job, you could just build a Docker image, and in a deployment job, you would just push that Docker image to a registry or just upload it to a server. Some services like Google Cloud Round even allow you to directly push Docker images so you can host your applications there. CICD is enough for a whole video and I really want to keep it as simple as possible, but you can check my mogul repo if you want to see how I use Docker in that CICD pipeline. I'm gonna be honest, this last use case is not something I do often, but it is something you can do and I think it's fun to showcase. Of course, one of the easiest things to do with Docker is to set up servers for some of your online games. For example, you can set up a Minecraft server easily with Docker, and there is actually a very popular repo with a bunch of configuration options. But a server does not require you to run any graphics, so can you run a game with graphics through Docker? The short answer is yes. Why would you do this? Well, to be honest, it's mostly for fun. Let's say you want to play Doom, but you don't want to play the board. You want to play the OG one released for MS-DOS. Sadly, if you try running that, you will most likely not be able to run it, unless you're running free DOS, but why would you do that, I guess? You could use an emulator to play the original game, but if you use Docker, you can set up the configuration once, push it to a repository, or store it somewhere in your computer, and each time you want to play Doom, you can just run one Docker command. So in this basic project, I just set up a simple Ubuntu image that uses DOSBox, an MS-DOS emulator to automatically run Doom when the image starts in a container. Now that's the easy part. The tricky part is getting graphics to show up. Docker containers can't access your screen by default, so we have to use something called X11 forwarding, essentially telling Docker to redirect the graphics to our actual monitor. In order to fix that, at least on Windows, you have to install an X11 server. So don't worry about the details, this is a huge rabbit hole and this video would be too long otherwise. The point is that if you configure it properly, you can run the original Doom in a Docker container. You could also configure it to install an MS-DOS operating system instead of using an emulator, but that's too much hassle. Now there are only two more issues to fix. One, there is no audio. This one's fixable, I just don't want to do it right now. Two, and most important, I don't know how to play Doom. And that was the video. Just some quick updates about the channel and some of my projects. If you watched my last video, you may have noticed that Mogul, my search engine, is down. 
I was not planning on keeping it running it forever, so you won't be able to use it anymore. Now I did look at the pull request I got, but I've had little time lately because I have a job now, at least for the summer, so if you submitted a PR, I will eventually accept some of them. That being said, I will make a few videos during the summer, but they will most likely be chill videos where I talk about things. I will return to project grinding during the fall. Thanks again for watching.